Hi, everyone. Thanks, Vicky. So today I'm going to talk about seven tips and tricks on how to make the most of your Kubernetes journey. So the first one is take it easy. So you might have used other orchestrators like Mises or Docker Swarm, but Kubernetes is just a little bit more complicated of all of them, right? And as soon as you start deploying, you realize that things aren't so easy anymore. But it's only when you move to persistent storage and networking that things are really, really complicated. And they don't stop if you go to network policies or pod disruption budget. So it's hard. So take your time and, you know, you might not learn Kubernetes in three hours or a weekend. So be, be aware of that. Tips number two is just pay attention to your productivity when you use the command line. So we spend a lot of time typing commands uh, such as kubectl get pods. So it makes a lot of difference if you have your um, command line optimized. So that doesn't mean just using things such as kubectl autocompletion. Also means using, you know, knowing what to search when, when it comes to documentation, so kubectl explain, or using tools to change context and namespace quickly, using, plug using crew to manage your plugins in kubectl, or like um, a, a terminal prompt like a QPS1 to just get um, the current status of the cluster at a glance. Um, a couple of links if you're interested in this sort of stuff um, on, on the screen. Number three is don't drop connections. So you might be aware that Kubernetes, when you do a rolling upgrade, is gonna create a new pod and then switch that pod uh, for, for all your deployments. So that deployment is, that, that switching is based on something called readiness and liveness probe. So Kubernetes will wait for the liveness and readiness probe before it switches the new version. Now, if you don't set those readiness and liveness probe, what happens is Kubernetes will not wait for your application to start. It will actually just replace immediately, which is a, a, an excellent recipe to take down your production infrastructure. Tips number four is click and play. So you might be tempted to just use Google Cloud Platform, click on the UI, select a couple of options, a couple of AZs, and create your own cluster. And then click on it and connect. You might do the same with EKS, so just go in console, couple of screens, and, and create your cluster. Same with EKS as well. Um, but if you do that, you should be aware that there are some challenges with, with, with doing so. And mainly, uh, the challenge is around keeping the configuration in sync, the time it takes to create those configurations, always the need to go and click on stuff. Instead, what you should pay attention to is to just use something like Terraform, so infrastructure as code, or Pulumi, where you can have things like this, where you script out the entire infrastructure, and then with a command, you can just bring it up. Number five is exposing services. So you might be familiar with services in Kubernetes. You can have multiple of them. And you have a sort of external load balancer, which is, used the in, which is called the ingress. And then you could have several ingresses. The most famous one is Nginx. But you can have as many as you want. So which one should you choose? Well, it depends, right? Just pay, the, you know, pay attention and spend the time to select the right one. Number six is automate your governance. So if you're looking at validating your YAML files or enforcing best practices when it comes to writing uh, resources, standardizing your YAML, or just the, in general, being really quick at getting feedback when your YAML isn't the way you want it to be, just use the open policy agent, copper from Cloud 66, or um, Qbevol from uh, Instrumenta. Uh, they're all designed to basically look at your YAML and, and give you feedback or reject uh, resources. The last tip I've got for you, the last tip I've got for you today is make new friends. I was lucky enough to be in KubeCon Barcelona this year, where I had the opportunity to meet people that I usually only meet online. So to make the best of your Kubernetes journey, my advice to you is enjoy the, re enjoy the next three days because it's going to be great. Um, that's all I wanted to say today. Thank you very much for listening to me. I'm Dan. I work for Learn Kubernetes, and this is it. Thank you very much.